Hey folks, it's Dr. Rowe here. I hope you are well. It's a beautiful sunny morning coming up to March. Spring it's on its way and I wanted to tackle very quickly a question that still comes up regularly and whether you're already just getting into property or you're actually brand new to this. And by the way, this is a calculation that can be applied to all types of business, but I'm going to apply it here to the relevance of a property is return on investment. Now, uh, just to try and help you understand this, when you put your money in a bank, let's say you put £100,000 in the bank and the bank talks to you about an interest rate that you're gonna get, that is your return on your money. So let's say for the sake of argument, you put £100,000 in the bank, you leave it for a year, and at the end of the year, the bank give you back £100,000 and £1,000, probably less than that, but let's say it's £1,000, you've earned £1,000 on a £100,000 investment. So your return on your investment of £100,000 is £1,000. So you've earned £1,000 um, as a return on the original investment of £100,000. So let's now take that and apply that to property investing. <laughs> I borrowed a pen from the, uh, one of the carpenters upstairs and I've drawn this on the wall here. Now it might be in reverse because we're on, let's just switch this round, we're on the selfie mode. Right, so return on investment is equal to the profit that you're made divided by the cash invested. Now, how it's typically done is calculated on an annual basis. In reality, this is return on investment on the cash invested over the time period in which you invested that money in and made the profit. So one could argue that the same 100,000 pounds put in the bank over a year makes you 1,000 pounds return on investment. If you put the same 100,000 pounds into a property deal and made 30,000 pounds profit, that would be a 30% return on investment. If it took a year, that'd be a 30% over the same time period. What some people will say is, well, what if it takes less than that? Let's say it took six months to do it. If it, it, <coughs> if it took six months to do it, then you've basically made 30% return in six months. So you could extrapolate that, in other words, extend that out for the year and say, well, had I do two projects like that, I could make a 60% return on investment. But essentially, it's the return of your cash in terms of a profit over a given time period. Now, when it comes to property, there's a few other things we need to consider here. So I am going to just share with you the, what I've written down here. I'm just gonna ask him to switch this off just for a minute. Maybe not, too busy there. Okay, hopefully this isn't too loud. Right, what things do you need to take into account when it comes to your projects? Now, this is the stuff that people tend to forget. So I'm just gonna quickly break them down here. We've got purchase costs that are all, that's, that's the costs associated with buying the property. So from the minute you start the process, think about all the costs involved. Do you need to engage a surveyor? If you do, fantastic. Maybe a structural survey or a normal survey, whatever it is. But remember, there's other surveys. Like on this house, we had to have surveys done for asbestos. There was other costs with removing of asbestos. So... That, that was part of the works, but in the pu purchasing process, what we've got is anything associated with, excuse me, anything associated with the purchase of the property. So list those out, make sure you've, ca you've allowed for all of that, because remember, it's, it's profit divided by cash invested. What some people will do is when they're doing the calculation, they'll actually forget some of those costs. And then of course, actually their real uh, return on investment may have been lower because they didn't assume or take into account those other costs. Um, entry costs. Now that might be slightly different to purchase costs. You might have, a, might, you may have some other entry costs going into this. What I'm trying to say is that you, anything that you can think of that you can pull together, it might be that you've had to pay someone to come out um, to visit the property with you to do an assessment. Uh, it might have been that you've had a bat, <laughs> a bat, a bat survey done uh, because there's issues with it as being a, an old listed building, whatever. Key thing, I'm just wanting to list out everything. I've got my works, my cost of the works. That's the cost of all the renovation works on the project. Now, a lot of people just take the works while they're on the project, but I would say any works leading up to it, this property needed ground works, then there's the main renovation works, 
Then there may be some follow up afterwards. There might be some clearing up. You might need to get some skips in to finish off some things. There might be some finalizing, whatever it is. You've got to allow for all of your costs. Where I believe people get return on investment wrong is they tend to be, they underestimate their costs going into the, into the project and out of the project. Think of it as a package. Everything goes into that package, right? And that's all your costs. Legal fees. So that would be your personal legal fees. Uh, for example, I did a, if you remember yesterday, I did um, a video where I was talking about the fact that I was doing a refinance. Now, there's re legal fees going into the projects and there's legal fees coming out of the project. There will be the legal fees with the solicitors dealing with the actual project, but then you might have to take on a second lawyer to give you independent advice if you're doing some sort of personal guarantee through your limited company and then you've got to go and seek advice from an independent lawyer and then they will charge you additional legal fees. So that's every single legal fee associated with the renovation and if you're selling it, the sale and of or the possible refinancing of as well. Finance costs. So let me flick this round so you can see it the other way around. If you want to take a picture of this, this is finance costs. So you've got purchase, entry, works, legals, finance costs. All right, so what's that? Your broker may charge you a fee. Uh, all brokers will get a fee from the bank, but your broker may charge you a separate fee. There may be other fees associated. For example, they might charge you um, administration fees, and this will be the bank. Um, and you can pay the fees up front, or you can add those fees to the actual mortgage, and in that case, you've got to allow for that as well when you're doing your final calculations. And then finally, I've got holding costs there. Now, some people say, what do you mean by holding costs? When you, so holding costs down there, you can see. So holding costs are basically the costs associated with holding the property while the renovation is going on. Now, let's say it's a five, this is, this is an eight, month, eight or nine month renovation, but if let's say it's a four month renovation, you buy the property, there's no tenants in the property, when I mean, you've got a mortgage on it, let's say the mortgage is 500 pounds a month. So you've got 500 pound a month, for four or five months, well, however long the renovation is, let's say four months, that's 2,000 pounds. You've also got potentially stamp duty. You've also got uh, other things like overhead costs. You've got electric, gas, anything like that. They are all the costs of holding the property whilst the renovation is going on. So at the end of the project, having done it, made it fantastic, and making it look beautiful, you get to a stage where you go, right, now, we're either gonna sell the property or we're gonna refinance the property. If you sell the property, you're gonna to get to a point where after the sale, a certain amount of money is gonna drop into your bank account. Now, that is the cash back to you. You then have to work out what your net profit is because it might be that out of that money that comes in, you still have to pay certain people back because you haven't cleared all your costs. For example, there might be a final refinance cost to pay. There might be a few legal uh, fees to pay. There might be something to pay off to the builder uh, having got your money back, there's some final works to finish off with. So the real exercise is the final paperwork exercise of saying, right, these were all my costs. This was the final sale. This is what I bought it for. My profit is that much minus my costs. So that means my true profit is that much. Then you work out what you put into the project. You divide that into the profit, i.e. profit divided by cash invested and that will give you your return on investment. Hopefully that makes sense. So you might want to get a pen and paper out and play with this. You know, for example, I mean, you can do this and work the numbers out. You buy a property for 100,000 pounds, you have 20,000 pounds worth of work to do on it. All right, so it's 20,000 pounds worth of work. You have another 5,000 pounds worth of legals and finance costs, so you're in 25,000. And then let's say you have some holding costs of two and a half thousand so it's twenty seven and a half thousand pounds worth of total cost going into the project and then you go and sell the property on and you make for the sake of argument if you made twenty seven thousand five hundred pounds worth of profit and you're all, all in costs into that were twenty seven thousand five hundred then you'd make a hundred percent return on investment remember you'll have had to put some money down as a deposit as well so you've got to take that, that, that into account 
So it's once you've been through a few examples, it'll make sense. The key thing is to get this into a spreadsheet and practice and run the numbers and run the numbers and run the numbers and run the numbers. And your objective as an investor is to decide on what your minimum return on investment is. What we haven't allowed for here, and if I had a pencil, I'd write it up. Under financing, you're gonna have finance cost to the lender, but you might have angel funding. Now, if your angel has lent you money, there'll be a cost of borrowing the angel money. And of course, that needs to be taken into account as well. So that is a cost which ultimately affects your profit, which then, of course, affects your final return on investment. That's it for now. Dr. Rose signing out. Return on investment.